you are sitting down just give me one minute just one minute rise from your seat look at the front look at the side turn to the back turn to your side turn to your front look up look down stretch your hand like a wind i want to fly <laughs> Like a wings. You know, Pastor Sam, there's a time, there's a way you can pray and speak in talk kapunda for hours. It will look like you want to fly. I don't know if I've experienced it before. Like there's a wings. You should just disappear. <laughs> it, like you should just fly. Uh, you know, sometimes you will not come out of that prayer room. You come out of the prayer room like this. You now start looking. Like you are seeing the world from a different dimension. You know, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> One time I pray, pray, pray to an extent. I went, I was seeing, uh, I was seeing through Larry. I, I pray, 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 pray. I wonder, three days drive fast. And I went into the market to go and buy what to eat to break my fast. As I entered the market, I just saw a woman, she was walking with her head. I said, Madam, why is your head down and your leg up? She said, Did you see me? I said, What are you talking about? I said, I'm seeing you now. She said, I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost. I came to the market to actually pollute some of the food items people want to buy. I was now looking like, Am I the only strange person? I was looking around and it was like the whole world was completely upside down. Stretch your hands. When I said, get ready, like a wings, you will stretch your wings. Listen, there are some chicken here and there are some eagle. But I am an eagle. I am not a chicken. I am an eagle. Oh, yes. How does eagle, how do they swap? You stretch it. You rise above circumstances. Above limitations. Above barriers. The Bible says. Uh, those that wait upon the Lord. He will renew their strength. They shall march. <laughs> hey, somebody Ah, Can you go around and stretch your wings and swap like an eagle? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. The next thing we're going to do. I was a time. I was on the exam hall. And suddenly I forgot. The, you know there's a way you will read. Your brain will be very hot. You will not see scripts. You will forget. To even spell to. You cannot. To. Anna. You know what I started doing? I started laughing in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> As I was laughing, that's what I was going on. As I started laughing, everything I read came back. Everything that came back. Because I didn't know the prayer to pray. So I started. Now someone here. You are going to burst into laughter. For the next two minutes. Hear me. Listen. Let me tell you what will happen. Number one. Why you are laughing. Check your phone before 12 noon. There will be an alert there. I am not joking. I, this is a reality. Check your phone. Someone here. 12 by 12. An alert will enter. Someone here. The exam you, you wrote and you are afraid of results. By the time you start laughing, when you get back to school, they will tell you your results that you are afraid of. You are going to have the highest. Somebody laugh! <laughs> 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 Ah, 
Thank you, Jesus. You know what? I'm afraid because if I start continue, I won't share the word. And it will pain me what I want to say. I need to share the word. Hallelujah. So let me share the word so that, you know, time will not catch us on our way. So sit down wherever you are. Don't just sit down. Don't worry. Even while you are seated, the Holy Ghost will begin to move. The atmosphere is on fire. I am telling you. There is a season that has fallen upon us. There is a dimension that God has, has given us access to enter. It's called the dimensions of rejoice. How do I know that you are truly born again? Is joy. How do I know you have lost your salvation? You lose your joy. The first thing that happens to you when you receive Jesus is that you receive joy. It's called the joy of salvation. That's why when the devil wants to attack, the moment you have no joy again, you have lost redemption. We have not just gathered you here just to make you, just to do acrobatics or do what do you call it? Uh, just to jump up and down and down, sweat. That's not what we brought you here for a dangerous, a dangerous mystery. An assignment, a dangerous mystery. A mystery that will bet revival in your life. So much has been said about joy, but I will just mention one or two areas of what he didn't say about and then we'll you know we'll practicalize what we need to do ah, yeah. hey. let me say this to you men of old who operate by dimensions of power and by dimensions of spirit they understand the mystery of what it takes for a man to truly rejoice. We have a lot of things in this generation that fight your joy and that hinders you from rejoicing on a daily basis. And there are temporal joy that most of us have. Temporal joy. We, we exhibit temporal joy. Those joys are not permanent. I want to show you a permanent joy that will crystallize revival in your life. One of the temporal joy most of us have for guys here is when you are watching soccer. Chelsea and Man U. I am not a fan of soccer, but when Nigeria is playing, my wife knows I will shut down everything and watch. I don't know why I love Nigeria, but when they are playing, even though they will break your heart, Never depends on them. They are heartbreakers. They are, uh, is it Chioma or Amaka? I don't know which one's on. But one day I was watching Nigerian match. I don't know who they were playing. And Muhammad, what's his name, scored. And you can see the way I jumped from the seat and I carried Ivan, my son. I carried him. I did not know that we, I was heading towards Bankoni to throw him <laughs> down. Until my wife said, Hey man, what are you doing? I didn't know I've carried the boy. You know what was inside of me? There was a joy. But even though that joy ends the moment the match ends, it's called temporal joy. And let me say this to you anything that you are joyful about in this world. It's a prototype of how your joy should react in the spirit realm. So if I can rejoice that way because I am watching a local match, God is expecting me that when I enter his presence, that joy must multiply. 
If I do not multiply that joy, what I have done in the world will stand as a weakness against me. How can you be so joyful because you are watching a local match? You now enter the presence of God. You cannot rejoice. So when I get to the judgment day, God is telling me, why do you not rejoice? And God said, but when you were watching match, you were rejoicing. So I saw that it is withstand as a judgment, as a weakness against me. Ladies here, yeah, you know when somebody credits your account as a young lady, how will you shout? What joy will come out of you? For instance, now, and um, patience, I say, give me your account. And I say, and I, and I freaky your account. One million naira. How, how will you jump? Eh? How will you jump? Look at, that is, that is money that we finish. But there is a joy that will not expire. I am coming to that. You know, you take, you see people who take alcohol. <laughs> you know, you know, there's this demonic song people sing here and there, and all these ladies. A lady sang, sang, sang from alcohol. She took the tour. From the tour, she took bleach. From bleach, she took Isa. The girl almost died. They, they, they sing that song that they want to sip alcohol because they don't want to think about bad things again. That's why they are drinking alcohol because they don't want to go back to their bad life. So they are trying to mentor you that alcohol is the requirement or it is what solves your problem. But every alcohol you take will expire when the bottle finish. Your problem continues. The other time my wife took me to a place she said emma i wanted to taste this thing i said what is he said it's so sweet and we got there it was somewhere in the kedja and it, it is called milkshake it's a drink mixture of 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 ice cream and 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 what you got they break it down and when i drank the, i was saying i won't drink it i won't drink it i drank the first one i said give me another cup I drank the second one. I said, give me another cup. I drank the third one. I said, give me a takeaway. It's like I should enter into where they are manufacturing that drink. And I should drink everything. But as sweet as that thing is, it gave me a joy. But that joy is temporarily. Because the moment the pleasure of that joy, that drink stop, that pleasure stops. But God is saying... That there is a joy. I, I, before I come to that, you know, I, I've seen people who, who try to counter us as believers. Why are they jumping? Why are they jumping? What is there about? Why, why are they jumping? Listen, one sign to show that you are truly dead is when there's no joy inside of you. Because in the graveyard, the Bible says, there's no joy. How do I know you are dead? We are jumping, singing, you are there, folding, you are. My auntie, you are dead in the spirit. Not only dead, you are dead physically. Spiritually and spiritually, you are dead. The sign that you are alive is the sign that there is joy inside of you. So when you get to the graveyard, it's quiet and it's dying and dull and quiet. But when you get to, you get to, you get to, you get to hospitals where babies are born, you hear cries of babies. The cry of baby is not the cry of pain, but it's a cry that a new thing has been birthed. So joy is a symbol of new beginning. The scripture pastor they read, Isaiah. 12 in verse 3 media bring it as 12 in verse 3 as 12 verse 3 Philippians 4 verse 4 Philippians 4 verse 4 it says it says rejoice in the Lord always I say rejoice in the Lord always always pastor why are you telling me to rejoice I have no money I have I, 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 I just lost they just broke my heart I just, I, I just, I couldn't pay my house rent. I, I can't pay school fees. I miss my exam. So I should rejoice. I should rejoice, Pastor. Do you know what? Do you know I should rejoice? I'm sick in my body. I should rejoice. I, why should I rejoice? Why? Tell me. Tell me why. Listen, I do, you do not need a prophecy for me to tell you that every one of us here, we have one problem or the other. Everybody. 
You don't need a prophecy. I don't need a word of knowledge. I don't need to come here and say, oh, 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 auntie, 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 I see a problem in your life. It is written in the scripture. It's written there. What did the Bible say concerning that? John 16, 33. John 16, 33. You see, it is written there. John 16, 33. As long as you're in this world, he said, there is wahala. Once you are in this world, there is tribulation. So, it's part of our package that you're on earth. As long as you're in the world, there's trouble. Just as our problems varies and our problems differs. But you must not grow yourself to an extent where you allow the situations of this earth to control your joy. What you are going through, you can allow to control the emotions of your joy. Tell the person beside, say, let, let nothing steal your joy. Have you get to a point in your life where, actually for those of us who do social medias, Facebook, ah, Facebook, you come on Facebook, one time during this lo um, lockdown last year, last year, was it last year, two years ago? We're feeding the church. Feeding the church. Remember, everybody. And I'll post something online. Somebody now came on corner. I said, all oh, this. I, th I think I took all of my old pictures. I just posted where I was posting. Somebody just went to my post and said, all oh, these useless pastors. You cannot even feed people during lockdown. And now you're putting beautiful pictures. Is it beautiful picture we're going to eat? And I, and I look at that. And I, was, I felt sad. Do you know how many we have fed? Now you came online and you can attack a man that you don't know. If I want to react to that, I will use the comments the person has said on me and react on that. And throughout that day, I will begin to feel sad. I and my wife watched a movie recently. The movie is called Bad Comments. Someone say Bad Comments. How people say some, you dress so fine in your own way and somebody come up and just rubbish you you now feel bad people by bad comment don't allow the opinions of people and what people say to affect your joy people are going through depression people are going through frustration you must not allow what people say as a matter of self, the, the requirement the cure for depression is rejoicing. How do you cure depression? If anyone is going through depression here, the cure for it is by rejoicing. When you begin to rejoice, depression disappears. So people begin to pass bad comments and all kinds of things. And you know, and sometimes, you know, when you go when you're on social media, you feel bad. Sometimes you feel like closing down your account because of what people say. If you allow the opinions of men and what people say to control your destiny you will not make progress so many of us are sad because of what somebody has said you post something online listen do not allow what you see on social media to control your joy your friend comes online and posts something and you feel sad you feel depressed you feel you feel weak you allow all those opinions the other time I was lying the line and I saw a particular church almost the same time with PICC and they are here in Canada, they are in UK, they are in Austria and the devil just ministered to me say, see your life. See yourself. Yeah, see battling with Elijah people. See your life. See your life. You are a failure. And I sat down. I listened to the doctrine of the devil and I started feeling depressed. When I woke up, my wife said, how are you? I did not answer. My children came to me. Daddy, daddy, I chased them away. What are you going to eat? I refuse to eat. What are you going to eat? I refuse to drink. I'm, I'm hearing the doctrines of the devil because of what I saw. And I started feeling depressed and down all through the day until the Lord came and spoke to me and said, son, just because of what you saw online, you are feeling sad. He said, do you know how many are praying to be in the position that you are? Do you know how many are trusting God to be in that level that you understand? It's true. So why do I immediately 
I felt happy and joyful. That is how some of us, our joy has been regulated because of certain things that you saw. You saw your friend getting married. You saw somebody. You saw things happening. Somebody spoke to you. You felt, you allowed that. That is why you must be in church this evening by four o'clock as we discuss emotions. But let me talk about a few things I want to talk about and we'll begin to pray. Return back to Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. There's a, there's a side of that scripture that I want to pick up. The Bible says, therefore, with joy, somebody say joy, shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. So all ex those who are in first service, he has explained everything about well, he has explained water as the Holy Spirit, he has explained well uh, as the package of salvation. But what I want to talk about is where's the bucket? I want to show you something and then round up and then we now go into practical. There's something there. Open that door. Where is it? Open that door. There's a bucket. Rejoice in him. Rejoice. No, no, just hold it. Come, come up. Come up. This scripture here is saying there is a well, a reservoir of blessings, favor, redemptive packages and opportunities and messes and everything you can think about is a reservoir here. That reservoir, you have free access to it. To get your success, to get anything you desire, marriage or fruitfulness or breakthrough, even as you go to work tomorrow, success in your exam is a reservoir, is there. The only thing that gives you access and guarantee to draw it, the fetcher, the drawer, you are the drawee. Someone say I'm the drawee. The only thing that can, that God, a system, a technology in the spirit. The only technology pericocyte to draw that thing. Sometimes it's not the fast. It's not the prayer. Sometimes it's not even your giving. The Bible is saying here that there is something that gives you the capacity to draw. It is a fetcher. It's a bucket. That bucket, the name of that bucket is called joy bucket joy somebody say joy so the bible says ah, i wish this water is not there can we just just huh? yes we want to just, just pour it out. i want to demonstrate something that listen is this scripture i'm explaining to you that there is a bucket in your hand you have access to that bucket when you go to that well the well is right here in his presence everything you desire is right here that you can go into that well with one thing it is called joy when you assess that well you hold bucket joy in your hand so come uh -huh. you hold this this is your bucket it's called joy someone look up look up say joy Someone said joy. So you enter into the well. Here is joy. So the moment I say, let us rejoice. You know what you are doing? This is your bucket. You don't know. It's spiritual. It's not, it's not tangible. You now fetch. Someone say fetch. This is what you do. So whenever we say rejoice, you know what you are doing? You have a bucket spiritually. You fetch your success. You fetch your favor. There's a where. You fetch your miracle. You fetch your healing. You fetch your new job and promotion. So when you have that joy in your hand, you can fetch. Some of us, the quality of the joy we used to fetch is this. And this is the level of deliverances that you have. Because you do not approach it with a maximum joy. I will hand up as I give you Luke chapter 10 in verse, 20, in verse 17. 
Luke 10, verse 17. Maybe I'll give that quickly and I'll round up. I want to tell you what Jesus did with joy. How Jesus used joy. And we are going to die. Let me tell you, the only place success starts from the top is in the graveyard. That's the only place success starts from. Success usually, the only place success, they start digging from up and they dig down is in the grave. Every other aspect is start from the down. So Jesus gave them nothing. He told them, don't talk to anybody. Don't do anything. Don't salute anybody. And he sent them out. He will keep them. So in verse, it, and so one day, when these disciples, after they went out, they, they started manifesting power, you know, healing and miracles. And they came back and they started rejoicing. They were rejoicing not because they were given a car. They were rejoicing not because they got a promotion. They were rejoicing, the Bible says, they were rejoicing, returned with joy because devils were subjected unto them. So these people were rejoicing because they have been given authority and power. Go to verse 19 and there were 20. So Jesus he said, I give unto you power to children, seven and scorpions, and go to verse 20. And in verse 20, see what happened there. Jesus said, notwithstanding, in this rejoice. Hear me. Someone say rejoice. Rejoice. Not that the not rejoice. Not. Not. Listen. That the spirit are subject unto you. But rather rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Do you know why we jump in the house of God? Why our rejoicing church is better than the rejoicing in club? My name is in the book of life. I rejoice because if rapture stand, poo, I'm rapturing with him. I am I'm rejoicing. He said, Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Rejoice that you have a record in heaven. You rejoice. That's the number one reason why you should rejoice first. Then in verse 21, this is where I want to go. Oh, somebody say, In that hour, can I hear your voice? Say, In that hour. I'm not hearing your voices. Say, so in that hour. Listen, when they came back to Jesus, they started, you know, they started, you know, ex happy and excited and sharing their testimonies with Jesus and how demons bow and how they heal and all that and everything. And Jesus calmed down and was looking at them and said, hmm, okay. I know where this experience is. I know, I know where it's coming from. I know this and that. And, and everything. And the next thing was, suddenly, the moment changed. The Bible says, in that hour. Which hour? Church response. Which hour? Now, in that hour, Jesus himself, your own Jesus, the one whom you serve, the one whom you follow, the one whom you call upon, the one whom you have come to see. The Bible says, Jesus, somebody said, Jesus, Can you shout it now? You have it on the screen. Can't you see it? Rejoice. Where? In spirit. Now there's a difference between rejoicing because your club had won. That's a rejoice in the flesh. That's a rejoice in the spirit. They must say he rejoice in the spirit. What does the rejoice in the spirit mean? It means that your rejoicing is back by revelation is propelled and crystallized by a mystery that the people of the world does not understand. The Bible said Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. What does it did? It means it, it, the, the Hebrew Greek word means agalion. The Bible said is pained for joy. Alanda kapakataya. It means agalion. It jump. It jump. It jump for joy. So when you see us jumping like this, it is we mean we are agalion. Our jumping is not because we want to lose weight. It's because there is a mystery in the spirit that when you rejoice, you are fashion. You are you are drawing. That, that it means when you rejoice, it means to to leap for joy. You can crawl like this and be leaping for joy. That's you can be running like that. <laughs> you are doing something strange. That's to, to rejoice. To rejoice means you skip for joy, happy and excited. Overjoy, overjoy. Someone say overjoy. Over those of joy. It's like they gave you, you drank, uh, you drank something, and then your eyes is like this. You are overdose of it. That's joy. So Jesus, this was what Jesus did. He rejoiced in the spirit. In the spirit. 
in the spirit. So when I ask you to rise, let us rejoice. You know what you are doing? You are rejoicing in the spirit. But he did not only rejoice in the spirit. The Bible says he rejoiced in the spirit. And, and what? He declared. 